Hey everybody. So I've been driving around for about 20 minutes trying to find a parking space. We finally have. So, this is, I suppose you would call it a, a more expensive end of Eastbourne maybe. Um, and yeah. You sort of have to come out of the town to try and find any parking that you haven't got to pay a fortune for. So, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd have a on-foot wander. Obviously, I've already um, hopefully posted by now a video showing the centre of the town. So, we're just going to wander along the seafront and uh, give you a perspective of Eastbourne Beach Seafront. Lovely day. Blue skies-ish and some sunshine, which is nice. And I'm not quite as cold. So I'm only in jeans and a hoodie today, which is, which is quite good. So heading, um, I can never remember this name of this road, um, but we're heading towards an old uh, historical building called the Grand Hotel, which uh, is down the end of this road in white. Very old building, um, looks very nice architecture wise. And that is on the seafront, so if you're looking to come and stay in Eastbourne and you don't mind paying the price uh, to stay at the Grand Hotel, then it's probably quite a nice location. Uh, just avoid the rubbish bins. And look, you know how I like a rubbish bin. Look at this lines of them not really what I had in mind because these are just for uh, residence residential property obviously I prefer to see a, a bin out in public as well on public roads and in the parks but I'm not going to get on my high horse about rubbish bins we've all heard it already Now, as I said, we're um, we're heading towards the seafront, and uh, it's a nice day for it. So hopefully, hopefully the tide's out, and we can show the uh, the seafront in its full capacity, shall we say? Don't know what they are. Don't know what they are either. Well, they look pretty. Mm, maybe snowdrops. Don't know. I have no clue. I'm not green fingered. But flowers are a bit like music to me. I know what I like. I don't necessarily know what it's called. Ah, I was just about to ask, I wonder what this tree is, and then there it is. It's clearly the cherry tree, it's quite novel. Got little teapots hanging up, and some flags, cups and stuff. It's kind of cool. So this is just coming up to the back of the Grand Hotel. So uh, this would be where the trade entrance is for all deliveries for food and 
uh, laundry etc will be here and probably here maybe no it's closed now so just be in the rear for the deliveries let me that's better zoom out a bit a very big building very old and this road is called Silverdale Road and we've got the Grand Mansions these look very nice lots of white as you can see and then this is the front of the the Grand Hotel I'm assuming it's a five star but I don't know let's uh, get around the corner and we can have a quick look and then we'll cross the road onto the seafront once again apologies for the the sound and the bounce if it is um, filming freehand again just winging it straight out of the pocket so, so this is the main seafront road with the sea just through there which we'll see in a minute And it's quite a nice quiet peaceful day very often this road is very very busy but it doesn't look very busy today so let's have a quick look in the grand hotel we've got an outdoor pool which is now open and the hotel itself and like i say it's a very big hotel and very old dating back to probably Victorian times I guess not good on my my history but I would imagine rooms are in excess of 350 pounds a night um, I don't know I'm guessing I'm sure there are deals at times but um won't be a cheap place to stay and this area is used for all sorts of things throughout the summer um, we've missed the car show that was at the weekend we were just too tired to be honest but it would have been uh, a car show here and uh, in the summer when we have um, a thing called airborne which is in August so uh, we have plane displays across the sea and this lawn is full up with stalls relating to that so this is the promenade which goes all the way along there all the way up to the white cliffs at the end and down this way and this is the beach so it's probably the nicest day to come and view it actually there's nobody here the sea's nice and calm And it's a uh, very much a stone stroke pebble beach and that is for sea defenses um, to stop the sea encroaching into the town so they're constantly moving these stones around um, and they build the sea defenses and they change the what we call groins um, and rebuild them after they rot so they're always spending money along the coast for coastal defense A bit misty foggy out to sea a bit of a haze lots and lots of benches and these are memorial benches so people would have paid um, to remember their their family uh, here we go in loving memory of peter herbert uh, 4th of february 1923 so the 4th of November 2014, great dad and granddad. So his family would have put, paid for this bench to be here and then the plaque and the engraving actually in the back of the bench, which over the years sort of fades away. And all of these benches are like that. They're all been paid for by family members. Um, and obviously being on the seafront, they 
they need to be sort of sanded down and um, painted or varnished from time to time. And here we see the lesser spotted rubbish bin. Yay! So along the seafront, there tend to be um, rubbish bins. They're, they're covered by cameras. There's a CCTV system operation. Um, so they tend to be left alone. Um, but in certain areas inland, in, in around the streets, you know, the kids used to drop matches in and set fire to them and all sorts. And I think that was part of the reason for the demise of the bins. That and obviously the cost. Um, so this is quite a nice place, a little bistro pier. And it's got an outdoor sort of terrace with some glass around it to keep the wind off you. And it's a nice place to have a coffee or a little lunch. And as you can see, just around the corner, just up there, is the end of Eastbourne Pier. Uh, England is famous for its piers. We've lost some over the years, um, but uh, they're just long structures that basically come from the land and go out into the sea and give you a, an extension out into the sea. Not sure of the origin and why, I think it was something to do with the shipping to uh, allow ships to load and unload uh, without trying to uh, build a harbour or a port so they could just build these piers and the ships can come to the end of them and load and unload goods. And obviously that's in a years gone by. Nowadays they're a tourist attraction um, and this particular one, I haven't been on it for a while, but always had a nightclub at the end. Um, and through the middle there were various stalls and um, gaming arcades. But a few years ago it caught fire. Um, so there was a major fire on Eastbourne Pier and most of the original structure was lost. It didn't reach the end, so that is part of the original structure, but certainly in the middle section and at the beginning, that all burnt quite badly. Um, and we've had a few fires along the seafront. There was, uh, again, in recent years, there was a large hotel that caught fire along the seafront um, and was completely gutted, and I think it's still uh, in a derelict state, still boarded up. So this is what we call uh, the Wish Tower, Wish Tower Slope. Uh, just up above this this wall, we will see a coastal defence going back to uh, when ships had sails and they had cannon emplacements in there. And I um, can't remember what they call them, but they're a round concrete fortress, I suppose, uh, with cannon emplacements on the top of them. And that was part of the British coastal defence to defend against the Spanish Armada, probably. So we'll just get a, clip, a glimpse of that as I turn round uh, when we get to the end. And the, uh, the firefighters are down here, probably catching sun or a coffee. Well, they might be testing the fire hydrants, which they do from time to time. So as you can see, just up the top there, you can see the top of it. It's the coastal defence and you can go inside that and pay to have a, a bit of a tour around it um, and again it's an area where events are held in the summer it's been used over the years for various things the ladies uh, congregating around firefighters, I expect that's international. And we've got the RNRLI Museum, which is uh, the Royal National Lifeboat Institute. Um, so in Eastbourne we have lifeboats, which are funded uh, through charity, and that's if uh, if somebody gets into distress out on the, out on the water. So that's quite a new fire engine, couple of years old. And now we're gonna walk along the bottom promenade. So 
So we've got some beach huts coming up on the right, which are, um, I think they're privately leased. I think uh, they lease them every year. And that's just somewhere to keep, you know, your beach chairs and stuff like that. Uh, um, and you pay for them, they're not cheap. Um, but if you do come down to the beach fairly often, it's possibly not a bad idea to uh, hire one of those annually and just put your little barbecue in there and your chairs and your tables and your cutlery and it gives you somewhere to change etc etc so they, again they go back many many years the beach huts um, but trying to get get one nobody really gives them up uh, so the waiting list is years and years long there's uh, certainly not enough for the supply uh, well, enough of a supply sorry But uh, I, I believe they're council owned, so uh, you pay the council for them. And like I say, they're not cheap, but you know, if you do use the uh, the beach a lot, then if you can get one, they're probably not a bad thing. Oh, uh, West Rock Caf Cafe. I don't know what the relevance of the hippo is, but we have a hippo. And then tables and chairs to sit out in the sun. And you can get a drink or a cup of coffee and a bite to eat, cake or something there. Um, yeah, so we're coming up to another famous landmark for Eastbourne, which is Eastbourne Bandstand. Now, this has fallen into disrepair over the years. Um, obviously the salt water takes its toll and I can remember walking around this bottom section as a kid and jumping down onto the beach so uh, part of the the restoration of this is that they've built the beach up around it to protect it because the sea you know we used to go there as kids and we'd walk through this under underground section on a stormy day and dodge the waves when they would come in um, and obviously that's taken its toll on the structure. It's rotted all the steel and damaged the, uh, the concrete as well. So it's got into a state that it's not safe and it got closed a few years ago. But again, another venue where they would hold concerts and have bands playing and various things up until fairly recently, a few years, but then it just got condemned due to not being safe. And so it's now under restoration, which I think will probably take some years um, I couldn't get the funding for it initially, uh, but I think there have been various campaigns to uh, to fund it, and I believe that the money is in place now. This is the Cavendish Hotel, again another famous hotel in Eastbourne. Eastbourne Bandstand coming up. So maybe the actual bandstand part inside is usable. See if I can get a nice shot of the pier from here. It's uninterrupted.
like I say, there used to be a lot uh, of arcades and shops on the pier, but after the fire, um, it was pretty much empty structure. Uh, apart from the end, which remained untouched, but not the middle section. And you can see that there's new buildings there, they've got new roofs on, etc. So a bit of sunshine and the Brits tried to head to the sea. And uh, like I say, I'm wearing jeans and a hoodie today, but there are people down on the beach. But I'm acclimatized to a napper and the weather there. Um, so I'm still finding it a little bit chilly here, which is weird, because normally this time of year in England, I would be walking along in shorts. There we go, there's our, um, our stroll from just outside the town, Grand Hotel along the seafront. And hopefully that's given you an insight into the seafront end of the town. So like I say, on a previous video, I've done the inside, the main section of the town, the high street, the pedestrian area, as we call it. And uh, now this is all along the seafront. So that gives you an insight into my hometown. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to The Plastic Russian. Please like and share the video. Um, and uh, more to come. Got some more videos to post. And uh, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. And keep an eye out for uh, upcoming live streams as well. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.